Well, drought and flood forced them to flee their native Somalia back in 2010. And just when Fatun and her 11 children could feel a bit of comfort in Kenya's Dabab camp, the Kenyan government plans to have it closed. Here's a window into Fatun's plight and the likes of her. Fatun and her 11 children live here at Kenya's Dadaab camp, one of the world's largest refugee settlements. Having fled drought and civil war in her native Somalia back in 2010, the camp brought little comfort. Two years ago, the Kenyan government announced plans for its closure. I heard that if we didn't leave, we'd be beaten and forced out. An estimated 75,000 Somalis have left the Dadaab camp since 2014 as part of a so-called voluntary repatriation program with a resettlement allowance. Fatoun was one of those who reluctantly departed, but soon after crossing the border, their convoy was attacked. On the way, we were captured and held hostage for two days. That's where they raped and tortured us. To make matters worse, Kenyan authorities made it impossible for those returning to claim refugee status. And because of a shortfall in funding, she now receives a third less food than before. The first thing that the donor picks up is, why are you having some of these um, ideas or uh, requests for funds which looks long-term? And at the back of their mind, the question is, why have long-term programs when the camp will be closed very soon? A reprieve was granted in February 2017, when Kenya's courts outlawed the closure of Dadaab. But the government has failed to publicly acknowledge the announcement, leaving refugees like Fatoun feeling as insecure as ever.